If you've just decided to download Stardew Valley, congratulations, you made a great choice that has the potential to suck hours of your life away. But let's not move too far ahead of ourselves. Starting a farm for the first time in Stardew can be super intimidating and maybe even a bit overwhelming, so I've come up with a quick guide on 10 do's and don'ts for a Stardew Valley beginner, or really anybody who's looking for a little more information on some early game tips. My number one do is to give everything a chance. I know that for a lot of people, fishing is hard at first. If it's your first time playing Stardew, getting used to the controls can be really difficult, but it's also the hardest it's going to be right at the start as your bar size is the smallest it will ever be. One suggestion if you're new and are having a hard time with the bamboo fishing pole that Willy gives you at the start is to check out the training rod. It only costs 25 gold at Willy's fish shop, so it's super attainable and it's much, much easier to use. The only downside is that you can only catch common fish, but at the start it can be really helpful to get the hang of everything before moving back to the regular pole. And you may even find that you really enjoy fishing as time goes on. Oh, and it's also a super great way to make money early on too. The mines also personally scared me when I first started playing as for the fear of, you know, death. Which would explain why in Minecraft I prefer playing peacefully and designing houses. But as time has gone on, I probably spend the majority of my time in the mines or the skull cavern because I actually really do enjoy it which is kind of unexpected. Needless to say, Stardew was full of different things to do. Mining, farming, foraging, fishing. Wow, I did not realize how many F words there were there. But you won't know what you like until you give it a real chance. Plus, to progress in the game, you do actually need to spend your time doing everything at some point. Number two, don't sell your resources such as wood, stone, coal, etc. Although it may be tempting early on to get as much money as possible in order to buy crops or upgrade your backpack, this is just not the way to do that. These types of items don't sell for nearly enough versus how useful they are, especially in the early game. You're going to be needing a lot of wood and stone for building purchases, coal will be super helpful for crafting items, any ore you find can be smelted into bars and then you can use those to upgrade tools. Overall, just not a great idea to be selling these things. You'll definitely make more money by creating things that will then make things for you to sell. For example, building a coop with 300 wood and 100 stone to then be able to buy a chicken and have that chicken produce eggs on the daily that could be making you something like 100 plus dollars a day from one chicken versus selling that 300 wood and 100 stone to make 800 flat. You really want to be building that foundation to become a multi-millionaire and eventually take over the entire town. Number three, do check on the TV, especially in year one. If you've looked through the starting wiki at all for certain tips, a lot of these tips you'll actually find on your TV in the game. You can also check your fortune, which will let you know how lucky you're going to be that day, which can be helpful when going through the mines, for example. Also, if you're wanting to work towards eventually getting to 100% completion in the game, checking your TV for the Queen of Sauce recipes is super important. One of the things that you need to do for 100% completion is to cook every single recipe, and there are quite a lot of recipes that are impossible to learn without watching the Queen of Sauce. The show airs every Sunday for two years with new recipes, and you can catch reruns on Wednesdays where random recipes will cycle through. After the two years, it just repeats itself. But I urge you, if you're trying to 100% complete the game and you don't want to wait an extra year to complete it, just make sure you're doing it in the first two years. Seriously, in one of my farms with 100% completion, I wasn't worrying as much about it and it ended up taking me an extra two seasons to complete, just because of the recipes. So be warned. Lastly, the weather channel can be super helpful and important, especially when you're looking to upgrade your watering can, which brings me to my next point. Number four, do not try to upgrade your watering can when you don't have sprinklers yet and it's not forecasted to rain the next day. It takes two nights to upgrade the watering can, so the best practice would be to check the forecast for the next day and if it appears it's going to be stormy or raining, water all of your crops for the day and then head to cleanse before he closes for the day to drop off your watering can for the upgrade. This way, the next day your crops will still be watered and you'll be able to pick up your watering can the day after and water them all then. It's also a good idea to either upgrade your watering can on the second to last day of the season, as most of your crops don't need to be watered on the 28th as they will die when the new season comes. I wouldn't 100% suggest this though because I personally don't like wasting time on the first day of the season when I want to optimize my farm. That being said, another great option is to just upgrade it in the winter. But honestly, by that point, I would be surprised if you don't have any sprinklers, so just do what works best for you. Number five, do make chests. Kind of an obvious one, but without chests, you have nowhere to put anything you forage, fish for, harvest, etc. 
I would suggest that early on you only make them as you need them though. Like I said earlier, wood is a pretty valuable resource when it comes to building and crafting, so you don't really want to be wasting it on crafting a bunch of chests when you don't even have enough items to fill one or two. Yes, organization is great, but I don't think that over-organizing is 100% necessary early on. Number six, don't skip days by sleeping through them. I'm not sure if this is a controversial take or not, but I don't think there's much of a point in wasting days by going back to bed either right away or even by like 3 p.m. Stardew Valley is so great because there's pretty much always something you can do. Even early on when you've used up all of your energy for the day, either fishing, mining, chopping down trees or whatever, things like forging or talking to and giving gifts to people in the town don't take any energy. Times like this are also great to organize your chests or decorate your farm or your house. And as a little hint early on, if you're super low on energy and or health and you've gained access to the spa up in the mountains, maybe just take a minute to uh, sit in the pool. I don't know, you might find it a little helpful, perhaps. Number seven, do pay attention to what you need for your bundles in the community center and try to keep extras for things you may need in the future bundles. It's honestly one of the most aggravating things to realize that there's a fish you need, for example, that was only able to be caught in the summer, but it's fall now and you're gonna have to wait a whole year, practically, to complete the community center unless you're able to find it elsewhere. Concerned Ape has actually made it nice and easy to check on your bundles in progress by clicking on the golden scroll at the top of your player menu. You can check it anywhere you are in the valley as many times and for as long as you need. I don't know if you realize how nice this is. When I first started playing Stardew, this wasn't even an option yet, so every time I needed to see what I still needed for the bundles, I had to make my way back to the community center. I think I would even physically write it down sometimes, so please appreciate how much easier he has made this for us and check periodically to make sure you don't miss anything. Number eight, don't stress so much about doing everything right. Like I said earlier, yes, when first ever starting a farm in Stardew Valley, it can seem super overwhelming because there are so many different things to learn and do, but there's really no need to be overwhelmed or stressed. Stardew is pretty much an open concept sandbox type game, meaning that you have a ton of leeway, freedom, and creativity on how you want to play the game. Yes, a lot of people's goal is to complete the community center, for example, in year one. Some people have the goal to 100% complete the game, but you don't have to do that. You could literally take 10 years in game to complete the community center. That's a bit extreme, but it's just to help make my point that you can really do whatever you want. Not to mention my early days of playing Stardew again, but when I first started playing Stardew, I don't even think having 100% completion in the game was a thing. There was no Ginger Island or anything, but that first save file has like seven years on it or something where I just worked on my farm and played the game as I liked. All of that being said, you can totally challenge yourself to meet certain goals that do put pressure on you if that's what you find enjoyable. The great thing is that it's totally up to you. <laughs> Number nine, do talk to NPCs and get to know them. Like I've been saying throughout this video, Stardew Valley has so much to offer and the characters throughout the game add to the experience so much. They all have in-depth backstories, especially the marriage candidates, which can really help you feel fully engrossed and invested in the full experience of the game. And I know not everything is about winning, but interacting with and giving gifts to the NPCs really does help further your progress in the game as well. If you are looking to reach 100% perfection, you'll need to have reached full hearts with everybody and even have somebody move into your home to be able to get all of the star drops in the game. Not to mention that to learn all of the recipes like I was talking about earlier is only possible by getting to certain friendship levels with different villagers. Number 10, lastly, and maybe most importantly, don't follow everything anybody says you should do in guides like this one. As I've reiterated throughout this video, how you play is truly up to you. Only you know what you enjoy. Hopefully guides like these can help you along the way, but again, they are just guides. Ultimately, you're the one playing and if something isn't working for you, that's okay. So that's my 10 do's and don'ts guide for beginners to Stardew Valley. Thank you so much if you stuck around to the end of this video. This is literally my first ever long form video on this channel, so I really appreciate you spending the time here and I would love if you consider subscribing to my channel. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.